Good morning. Oh, I need more light. And I got more light. I just forgot to turn it on. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, it has been a long time, I know. But we are here. Last week was a heat wave. So much so that I was rarely in my own house every evening. And rarely by myself. My family and I were trying to keep cool in other places. This week seems to be a little better. So we are here. And we will catch up a bit. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. I can sing the good morning song to you. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. We're all in our places with such shiny faces. And this is the way to start a new day. Good morning. Today we are going to do two days in one. We're going to do Psalm 6 through 8 and Psalm 9 through 11. Again, that's Psalm 6 through 8 and Psalm 9 through 11 in this one video. If you remember, we talked about... Uh, sorry about that. My... Um, Phone is acting crazy. But if you remember, we talked about uh, in Psalms, I was going to try to read them, um, talk about sort of their origin, if I know it. Uh, and then from there, um, um, if there was any relevant thing um, that wasn't already obvious to talk about, I would kind of lift that out. Because remember, we are reading Psalms. Um, so these are songs. So it's like, think of us going through song lyrics um, when you are reading the book of Psalms. Um, you know how when you want to know the lyrics of a song. Um, nowadays, right, we just go to Google, type in a song name and put lyrics behind it. And it gives us the lyrics. So it's like we're reading lyrics of a Well, we're actually reading lyrics of a song. Um, so keep that in mind when you read the book of Psalms. All right, so... We are starting at Psalm 6 and I will read it. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord, how long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Among the dead, no one proclaims your name. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from my groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all of my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil. For the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be overwhelmed with shame and anguish. They will turn back and suddenly be put to shame. And that was Psalm 6. Um, and Psalm 6 is thought of as um, sort of a repentive psalm. Um, it's actually uh, written uh, by David. All the psalms up to 41 are written by David. Um, and in the early church, they used to sing this psalm on Ash Wednesday, uh, which was a day of repentance. Um, basically, um, David here is talking about, um, sort of, a, a repentive state that he is feeling. Um, we don't know. It doesn't specifically say what his sin is at this time. Um, there's some speculations of what it could have been. Um, but we know that David is crying out to God saying, Lord, um, please, please have mercy on me. Don't continue to punish me. Um, in verse three, he says, Lord, how long, right? I don't know if you've ever felt that way. If you've ever been, um, in the midst 
of the punishment of sin and just felt the heavy hand of God upon you um, and, and just said, okay, Lord, uh, forgive me, have mercy, please. How long do I have to go through this, right? That's sort of the state that David was in. But in the end of this um, psalm, he definitely says um, that he understands that God is going to punish like evil. Um, and that um, God is going to hear his cry. And so the Lord is going to deal with what I did, but he's going to hear my cry. Uh, he's going to accept my prayer. So all those evil people out there that think that I'm down and not coming up, don't believe the hype, right? Because the Lord is going to hear me, is what David is saying. Um, and and um, it's a beautiful psalm for... Um, those who are going through because it gives you hope at the end that God will hear your prayers. All right, let's move on to Psalm 7. Psalm 7. Um, and Psalm 7 um, is sort of like a meditation psalm. Um, it says, um, it has an intro that says that it was written concerning Cush, a Benjamite. Um, there's a lot of people who go back and forth on what that could mean. But most people think that this was written about Saul, uh, who was a Benjamite, um, and that this was written um, sort of at the time that David um, either was running from Saul or it's written in reflection as David looks back at a time when he was running from Saul. And it says, Lord my God, I take refuge in you. Save and deliver me from all who pursue me. Or they will tear me apart like a lion and rip me to pieces with no one to rescue me. Lord, my God, if I have done this and there is guilt on my hands, if I have repaid my ally with evil <clears throat> or without cause have robbed my foe, then let my enemy pursue and overtake me. Let him trample my life to the ground and make me sleep in the dust. <clears throat> So basically, David is saying here, if I have done anything wrong, Lord, let my enemy catch me. If I, sorry about that. If I have done anything wrong, then let my enemy catch me, right? Um, and then he says, arise, Lord, in your anger. Rise up against the rage of my enemies. Awake, my God. Decree justice. So you see here, David is crying out, Lord, uh, please, Lord, come to my rescue, right? Um, um, make sure that my enemy doesn't catch me uh, deal with my enemies God he said let the assembled people gather around you while you sit enthroned over them on high let the Lord judge the peoples vindicate me Lord according to my righteousness um, according to my integrity almost high bring to an end the um uh, vindicate me, Lord, according to my righteousness, according to my integrity, O Most High. Bring to an end the violence of the wicked and make the righteous secure. You, the righteous God, who probes minds and hearts. My shield is God, Most High, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge, a God who displays his wrath every day. If he does not relent, he will sharpen his sword. Um, he will bend and string his bow. He has prepared his deadly weapons. He makes ready his flaming arrows. Verse 10, I love, right? It said, my shield is God most high who saves the upright in heart. So even in this, um, God save me, God arise in your anger. Um, David is acknowledging God is my savior. He is my shield. He is the one that I can run to, the one that protects me. Verse 14, I love. Uh, we can make that the memory verse because it's just so poetic. It says, whoever is pregnant with evil conceives trouble and gives birth to disillusionment. Whoever is pregnant with evil conceives trouble and gives birth to disillusionment. In other words, um, um, when evil is in your heart, right, then you're going to think about how to uh, uh, put that evil into action. Um, and then once you put that evil into action, um, actually what you're going to birth out is disillusionment because it was all conceived by evil in the first place. Uh, you're going to birth out something that's not true, right? Um, again, that was Psalm 7 verse 14. Whoever is pregnant with evil conceives trouble and gives birth to disillusionment. 
Whoever digs a hole and scoops it out falls into the pit they have made. My mother-in-law used to sing a song, dig one ditch, you better dig two, because one ditch you dig just may be for you, right? Um, whoever digs a hole and scoops it out falls in the pit they have made. The trouble they cause recoils on them. Their violence comes down on their own heads. Then he ends this song with saying, I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will sing the praises of the name of the Lord Most High. Again, yeah, that was Psalm, the seventh chapter. Psalm 8, also written by David. <clears throat> um, it's a beautiful psalm. Um, it's quoted a lot, um, preached from a lot. Um, you will probably recognize some of the words of this psalm. Very beautiful psalm. It says um, in King James, O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Used to be a song about this, right? Um, but in NIV it reads, um, Lord, 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 our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants. You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of him? human beings that you care for them and so here he's saying when i consider everything that you're doing in the heavens and the earth when i consider how awesome you are god what is man that you even thinking about us right who are we that you take time to think about us beautiful song he says you have made man he's talking about a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor you made them rulers over the works of your hand you put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And as you can see, this is a song um, that David wrote to praise the Lord, to give him glory and to sort of just oppose man against everything that God has made. Like, why are you so concerned with us? Beautiful, beautiful psalm. Psalm 9 um, may have been written in sort of David's reflection of defeating Goliath, either immediate after, immediately after he defeats Goliath or maybe uh, looking back on the time when he defeated Goliath um, and victory over the Philistines. And Psalm 9 reads, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell you all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. Then this is the part that sort of stands out as uh, uh, maybe thinking back to Goliath. My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you. For you have upheld my right and my cause. Sitting enthroned as the righteous judge. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their names forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken my enemies. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the people with equity. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Um, uh, and then verse 10 reminded me of the sermon that Bishop preached on yesterday um, about, you know, knowing, right? He says, those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. And that's another memory verse right there. Psalm 9, verse 10. Psalm 9, verse 10. Those who know your name trust in you. So when you know, you trust. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have for never forsaken those who seek you. Sing the praise of the Lord enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. For he who has avenged his blood remembers he does not ignore the cries of the afflicted. Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death that I may declare your praises in the gates of daughter Zion and there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit. 
They have dug their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The wicked are ensnared by the works of their hands. The wicked go down to the realm of the dead. All the nations that forget God. But God will never forget the needy. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. Strike, Arise, Lord. Do not let mortals triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, Lord. Let the nations know they are only mortal. And so, remember, we're reading song lyrics here. So this was played to the tune of something, right? Um, and in, actually, when you start Psalm 9, it tells you that it's played to the tune of the death of the son. And so David took another song that was popularly sang in his time and put these words to it. We've heard that before, right? Uh -huh. Um, he took a song that was popularly saying not about anything that had to do with God and actually put these words to that tune. Um, and so you see that didn't just start with us. Um, um, and Psalm 10 doesn't have a title. So um, and some um, theologians believe that Psalm 9 and 10 are connected. Um, and in some works of the Bible, um, like the Vulgate, the Catholic Bible, they connect... Um, Psalms 9 and 10, but Psalms 10 can really stand on its own. It is a beautifully written psalm about um, the wicked and uh, all that goes with the wicked. Um, and in the end, it's David asking God to deal with the wicked. And it says, why, Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In his arrogance, the wicked man hunts down the weak. Who are caught in the schemes he has devised. He boasts about the cravings of his heart. He blesses the greedy and reviles the Lord. In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. Talking about the wicked, right? You met people like that. They don't think about God at all. In all their thoughts, they're not thinking about God. His ways are always prosperous. Your, law, your laws are rejected by him. He sneers at all his enemies. This is David basically saying, it seems like they're always getting over. Sort of Job's argument, right? Seems like the wicked prosper sometimes, right? Um, and basically he's saying that because God's judgment is sometimes afar off. Um, and so while you're waiting on God to judge the wicked, it looks as if the wicked are just going to keep on prospering. Um, he says to himself, nothing will ever shake me. He swears no one will ever do me harm. His mouth is full of lies and threats. Trouble and evil are under his tongue. He lies in wait near the villages from ambush. He murders the innocent. His eyes watch in secret for his victims. Like a lion in cover, he lies in wait. He lies in wait to catch the helpless. He catches the helpless and drags them off in his net. And we talked before about this lion that, that lies in wait. Lions make big roaring sounds. Um, so that they can make everybody run and they actually hang out for those who can't run as fast or who are weak or who are left behind. That's a word for some of us who uh, don't stay with the pack, right? Um, those that are loners, that are left behind, that don't stay with the pack, that's who the enemy preys on, right? Uh, it pays to stay with the pack. His victims are crushed. They collapse. They fall under his strength. He says to himself, God will never know this. He covers his face and never sees. Then David says in verse 12, Arise, Lord. Lift up your hand, O God. Do not forget the helpless. Why does the wicked man revile God? Why does he say to himself, He won't call me to account? But you, God, see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider their grief and take it in hand. The victims commit themselves to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked man. So this is David's cry out like, deal with them, God. Deal with them. Call the evildoer to account for his wickedness. That would not otherwise be found out. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations will perish from his land. You, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry. Defending the fatherless and the oppressed. 
so that mere earthly mortals will never again strike terror. And David again ends with this mere earthly mortals. In other words, God, show yourself as God so that we can see that we're just humans, right? And then finally, our last psalm of the day is Psalm 11. Um, this is a psalm where um, David is talking about friends that have given him advice while he was running from Saul um, on what he should do. And he talks about that advice and talks about why that advice doesn't make sense. Um, psalm 11. In the Lord I take refuge. So he establishes from the beginning why he's not taking the advice of his friends because I take refuge in the Lord. Then he tells us what his friend says. How then can you say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? So his friends are saying, you need to run. Right, run, run. There's nothing that the righteous can do. But David it says, I take refuge in the Lord. Um, and then this is a, a, a beautiful passage starting in verse 4. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes everyone on earth. His eyes examine them. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates with a passion. On the wicked, he will rain fiery coals. And burning sulfur, a scorching wind uh, will be their lot. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. The upright will see his face. And so David is saying, God is going to take care of my enemies. Don't you worry about me as long as I hide myself in God. God is going to deal with my enemies. As long as I hide myself in God, God is going to deal with my enemies. And that is the Psalms for the, uh, this day. We did Psalm 6 through 11. We will come back in our next video um, and do some more as we uh, continue catching up. But until then, know that I love you and God loves you too. In Jesus' name, amen.